Hey team, I hope you're doing well. Miss Vaughn here to talk to you guys about Sydney Sipo Sapalma's poem, Talk, Talk, and Talk. So my suggestion to you is to have your packet out and also a writing utensil and write notes as I explain the poem to you. And if you need to stop or pause or rewind, I suggest that you do that too. So Talk, Talk, and Talk is going to be exactly like it sounds. It's a poem about him talking. And the talking is not... It's not a superficial talk. He wants to dive into the deeper things that really matter to the black South Africans. And one of those things that he feels like he needs to talk about is the pain that they feel living under apartheid. And he also wants to be able to advocate for this message that black South Africans should reject any sort of desire or need for material possessions because he suggests that material possessions are a way for black South Africans to fit in with white South Africans. And he doesn't want black South Africans to feel that pressure to assimilate. He wants them to just feel proud of their culture and also their race. All right, so let's get started. So the title itself is Talk, Talk, and Talk. It kind of sounds initially like someone is gonna be doing some rambling. He's gonna be talking out some stuff, but the things that he says is not rambling. It does have some substance to it. So he immediately starts off with some colloquial diction and he starts it off with a curse word. He says, shit, baby, I wanna squawk. And when you hear that, you would think that maybe he's getting prepared to complain about something um, or to go on about something. And so to squawk in this instance is to make some sort of noise or to talk, or some people interpreted it when we read in class and it's that he's trying to holler at someone right now. So line three, he says, to say you don't need painted lips. Painted lips is a reference to lipstick or also makeup. And so he says, I don't, I want to squawk to say that you don't need painted lips. So he's telling someone, you don't need to wear lipstick, you don't need to wear makeup. And then the word is missing, but the suggestion is because uh, those lips can bleed your blood. You don't need hair sliding off like that. And for hair to be sliding off, it's a suggestion that this person is wearing a wig. And so that would be somewhat annoying to have to fix your hair that's sliding off of your head. And so he's trying to say, don't wear a wig to cover up your natural hair. But he calls it plated hair. And he says, because a plated head can do its own thing. So he wants this person, this woman, to be able to do her own thing wear her plated hair, her braided hair, not have to feel the pressure to wear a wig, and then also not have to feel the pressure of wearing lipstick. So it's this rejection of these beauty norms that have been reinforced by the white South Africans. He continues and says, yeah, baby, me and you gotta do our own thing sometime. Um, and that's suggestive because if we believe in that second line that he really is hollering at this woman, then for line eight, seven and eight, you think that when he says we gotta do our own thing sometime, that that's maybe suggestive. But then he continues in line nine and he says like talking more. So he's like the thing that we gotta do more of, it has nothing to do with me being attracted to you or with the beauty that I find in you. Um, it's actually having to do with um, wanting to talk more. And he says, cause we gotta say those things that make us so much shittish brothers and sisters and so shittish is like a play on the word skittish. And he's trying to encourage, now he moves to um, a conversational tone where he's talking to more people than just one person when he says brothers and sisters. And he's trying to encourage them to talk about the things that are very painful for them. So the things that they're most scared of. And he says, it's about time we stop talking between the sleeves of our shirts. So if you imagine talking between the sleeves of your shirts, it would be, through a whisper, and so he's like, we shouldn't be whispering to each other anymore. We are scared to be heard, scared to tell it and tell it more. So this is a very human line that he says. Um, usually when painful things are happening to us, we are scared to talk about it because we're scared that we're the only one that feels it. We're also scared of being judged. Um, and if we're speaking out about harm that's being done to us, we're also scared of any sort of repercussions that can happen. Um, and so he acknowledges that, that we're scared, we're actually scared to be heard and um, we're scared to talk about it. And we're scared to talk about it even more than the little that we already do. 
He continues and says, we don't dig this dog's life. So he compares their life to a dog's life in that line. And when he says dig, um, dig is like be interested in or to like. It's not like the physical act of digging a hole. He continues and says, yeah, baby, when you start to bleed sweat, that's the time to go on talking. So again, he reiterates the fact that, or he encourages the black South Africans that when you are in your most painful stage, that's the time that you have to use your voice. And he says, sure, baby, I dig my limousine. You dig your diamond ring. So there's two symbols there that are associated with status. One is the lim limousine and then the other is the diamond ring. In this instance, he says dig again, suggesting that he likes it. So he likes riding around in a limousine. He likes that symbol of status. And then he has uh, the line that says, you dig your diamond ring. And there's a little bit of irony where um, it could be an accusation to the black South Africans who buy diamonds that have been mined by other black South Africans because they knew the terrible working conditions. And so the pursuit or the desire to have a diamond is solely rooted in the fact that they want to be um, similar to or have the same status as the white South Africans, the white wealthy South Africans. And so then he goes on and continues, we could tell the world, go get stuffed. Um, and people in class when we read this poem very nicely said, go get stuffed is the equivalent to um, F off. And so he uses some slang there. And then he says, things have never been so good for us. So there's always the conversation that happens whenever people are currently saying that things should be better, or they want more freedom. Someone will come with a counter argument and say, but you've never been more free than you are now. Or there's been so much, pro so much progress that's been had. Um, and so he said, yeah, people can make that suggestion to us. But then he continues and says, but then we don't want to jive nobody. And so jive in this instance is to trick. And so he says he doesn't want to fool anyone or he doesn't want to trick anyone. So he's not trying to make his conditions any worse than they, than they really are. But then he continues and says that he goes into the more depth that plays on this idea of black consciousness and um, exploring your sense of self and your sense of belonging. And he says, because we can never jive our own face, not with the mirror in front of us. Oops. We can never jive our own face, not with the mirror in front of us. Yeah, baby, we got to keep on squawking. So he's like, I don't want to trick anyone because at the end of the day, I can't even trick myself. And any lies that I tell, or if I try to be like someone that I'm not, I have to go home and look at myself in the mirror and I don't even want to try to fool myself. And so then he says, yeah, baby, we got to keep on squawking. So this is where he encourages the black South Africans to continue to talk about what's happening to them. And he says, till the devil come out of his hole between legs saying, very sorry here, sirs. And the suggestion here is that if they keep on talking, then maybe finally the devil is going to leave. And the suggestion that we came to in class is that the devil are the white South Africans or the, or the British and Dutch people who have colonized South Africa. And so if they have pride in who they are and they continue to speak out, hopefully it will gain so much momentum that they can make the colonizers leave. All right, so that's it. Um, hope that was helpful. Be sure to turn in your annotations after you are done writing them down. Feel free to go back and rewind and rewatch if you need it.